Hi there class. What I'm hoping to do in this very brief video is to give you some guidance so that when you're doing that assignment on gross domestic product, you have some insight. So this is a quick tidbit on gross domestic product. This is the central theme or measure in macroeconomics, the gross domestic product. It's the beginning of the conversation we have on macroeconomic topics. Specifically, you're going to get used to seeing GDP. Okay? So here's what I want to do. And I don't want to keep you long because you are going to read this in the textbook. But I want to give some guidance. There are two methods, two popular methods for calculating GDP. Think of it this way. In macroeconomics, we're basically taking all the small segments of society and we're putting them together so that we can get an understanding of what's going on. Remember, macroeconomics is the big picture view of the economy. So what we want to do is, we want to actually put the economy together. We want to aggregate. Because that's the only way we can figure out if something is wrong, if everything is fine, what kind of policy we need to implement. This is why this measure is so important. We're going to aggregate. We're going to put everything together. And we're going to then use this measure in almost like a prescriptive way. We're going to analyze it and figure out what do we do next. How do we stabilize the economy? So the conversation associated with macro begins here. So how do we do this? How do we put everything together in the economy? How do we aggregate? Well, two methods. The first one is called the expenditure method. So the expenditure method, and it's actually pretty neat. Because what the expenditure method will do is, just as the name suggests, it's going to take a look at what exactly the demanders in society are doing. Here's the thing. Gross domestic product is the market value of all the final goods and services produced within the economy. So gross domestic product is the market value of all the final goods and services produced within the economy. So if we want to put all the final goods and services together, we got to find what people spent. Sometimes you'll see your textbook refer to it as calculating GDP from the demand side. Find all the final users and aggregate what they spent. Then you have a measure of exactly the total production in, in the economy. Now the question is, who are these demanders? Who are the people buying the final goods and services? Think for a minute. Who is buying stuff? Who is on TikTok? Who is downloading Instagram? Who is on Facebook? Maybe nobody, just me and my mom. But the thing is, the expenditure method looks at all the final users. Here they are. Who are the final users? If you're going, pick me, Casey, because I love Starbucks. Consumers are final users. Who else? If you're not a consumer, who else is buying stuff? Well, 
businesses are final users. Who else? There's another big one here. Think. Think. Who else is a big demander of final goods and services? There we go. The government. And basically, that's what the expenditure method is doing. Looking at what these final users buy. So at the end of the day, here's what happens. We aggregate everything these final users do. So the expenditure method gives us a nice, neat equation. It looks like this. Final users, put them together. Well, it's the consumers. That's where they get the C from. It's the businesses. They are investors. That's what we call them in econ. That's where we get this I from. One of the final user is the government. That's where we get the G from. Now, here's a little thing. Final users, as we have put them together here, are consumers, businesses, and the government. But we got to fix this up a bit. Because GDP is the market value of all the final goods and services produced within a domestic economy. What's produced here? So did we capture all the final users? Well, this is capturing you and I and your parents and all the final users that are here right now. But do we have final users somewhere else? Yeah, in other countries. So we got to include their exports. Not only that, things that we are purchasing here, for example, they weren't produced here. We don't want that in our measure for our total production. We didn't produce them here, but we consume them. We got to take those out. Those are our imports. So we subtract imports. That's where we get that nice equation from. Get used to the symbols. GDP by the expenditure method. When I ask you to calculate GDP, you find these components. Consumption. Gross domestic investment. We're very specific. Read the textbook. Government spending, exports, and then we subtract imports. So GDP by the expenditure method is consumption plus gross domestic investment plus government spending plus exports and we subtract imports. GDP is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. By the way, another name for this, X minus M, is also called net exports. So we can do an X and do a little N on it to signify the net exports. So GDP is equal to C plus I plus G plus Xn. This is a central equation in macroeconomics. It's so important. You need to be dreaming about this equation in this macro class. Get a henna tattoo of it right here. GDP is equal to C plus I plus G plus Xn. Yeah? I'm joking about the tattoo, of course. Although that would be cool. That's one method. Let's do the other. Let us do the other method. So we have the expenditure. Here's another method. It's almost as if we're looking at GDP. Some people call it from the supply side, but I call it GDP using national income. It is a little more complicated 
but rather intuitive. Here's the idea. GDP is the market value of all the final goods and services produced within a particular economy. In the first method, we found the final user and we tallied up everything they spent. That's the expenditure method. National income is going to go a step further. It is going to find all the income the final user actually has. Because listen, money in your pockets will eventually become a good or service you buy. So the national income method goes ahead and tallies up all the income from private citizens, from businesses, and the government, and uses that to get an estimate of GDP. Now the thing is, show me the money. Where will the money come from? Where do you get money from? Where do you get money to go buy your coffee? To buy your Xbox? Okay? To buy your guacamole? Where do you get that money from? Well, you own resources, right? You own your labor. You own land. You own the ability to think and build businesses with your mind. So, income comes as payments to the resources. So, things like a payment to land is rent. A payment to labor is compensation to employees. Earlier in the course, we were just calling this wages. Yeah? Income again, when you sell capital, you get interest. Income from the entrepreneurial ability, that's a resource too. You get profits. Okay? So income comes from profits also. And I'm going to break the profits down a bit. Because you have proprietor's income. You could be like a sole trader. And you get profits there. Or, here's another way you could get profits. It's still the profits line. Okay? You could get corporate profits. So, where are you getting money from? Rent. The wages are compensation to employees, the interest, the proprietor's income, and corporate profits. Both of these make up profits, okay? And then income also flows to another entity. It flows to the government. Where is the government getting money from? Where does the government get income from? And don't tell me they print it. <laughs> you might be tempted, but... Income in terms of a flow as a productive activity in society flowing from the government is in the form of taxes. We're very specific on production and imports. Add all of these together and you have national income. So put all of these things together and you have your national income, okay? When you dig into your reading, you'll see how these things are broken down. But if you add all of these together, you have your national income. Now, national income is not the same as GDP, remember? GDP is the market value of goods and services produced within the country. This is just how much money is flowing. It's not the same as the goods and services market value. So if you want GDP from this, you got to do something else. If you want GDP from this, here's what I know. You got to take this national income, I'm going to call it NI. Okay, you gotta 
add depreciation so you gotta add depreciation yeah you're gonna add kind of a little bit of a measurement fixer we call it a statistical discrepancy and then one final thing you gotta do you gotta subtract something called net foreign factor income that's a mouthful once you get the national income and you want to get the GDP, what do you do? You do three things. We love to do things in threes, threes in econ. So get the national income, three things. What are they? Add the depreciation, add the statistical discrepancy, subtract the net foreign factor income. Now, depreciation is just like what you're used to in your accounting class. In econ, we have another complicated name for it. It's called consumption fixed capital. Same thing as depreciation. It's the wear and tear on machines. The wear and tear on capital. So if you're producing stuff, you gotta add that back in. That gives you a value of production outside of the year you purchase the capital. That's the statistical discrepancy is just to make sure the two methods A and B are the same. Add them back in. This one, this one is a little bit tricky because what it is is it's income that's being received by Americans, but they're not working in the domestic economy, for example. So take, for example, me, Casey Campbell. I am American, but I'm working in Switzerland. Should that be counted in the total productive capacity of the United States? The answer is no. So it's subtracted out. Okay? It also includes in this number individuals who are not citizens of the domestic economy but they're producing here so let's say we have a toyota plant in ohio and we have a japanese national working there they're not counted in the national income but they're producing in the u.s that's added back in that's what this thing does it takes out all the domestic individuals the income they're receiving but they're not here producing, and it adds back in all the foreign individuals who are not here in the national income, but they're producing here. So if you want to move from national income to GDP, these are the three things you do to it. You want to get GDP by the expenditure method? Look at your tattoo. C plus I plus G plus XN, okay? That's pretty much what I want to point out to you with one more little thing. Let's do this real quick, okay? The very common or other measures associated with GDP. So some other measures associated with GDP. I'll do them real quick. Okay, so some other measures associated with GDP. Okay, so if you have GDP, that's what we just calculated with the two methods, and you subtract the depreciation. Remember, the other name for depreciation is consumption of fixed capital. You actually get what's called net domestic product. You want to guess the acronym? You have space in your tattoo? 
Here we go. NDP. Okay? So if you take the GDP and you subtract the consumption of fixed capital, you have NDP. But if you have NDP and then you subtract, okay, statistical discrepancy. Okay, and you add net foreign factor income that I just explained to you. Okay, if you take the NDP and you do that, then you actually get national income. Okay, kind of moving in the reverse of it. If you have the national income and then you subtract. Okay, so if you have the national income and then you subtract taxes and production and imports, so those indirect taxes, excise taxes, sales tax, okay, and you subtract corporate taxes, okay, and then you subtract social security. So all of that income, take these things out of it, okay? And then you subtract the retained earnings. We have a name for this. We call it undistributed corporate profits. If you take these things out of national income, okay? And then put in some transfer payments, so payments from the government to private citizens, some transfer payments, you actually end up with personal income. Okay? And then one last thing. Okay? If you subtract personal taxes from this, like your personal income taxes, okay, you actually get disposable income, kind of like your take-home pay. So let me go through this labyrinth of stuff here. If you start off with your GDP and you want to get some other measures, here's some ways you can manipulate the data. Subtract the consumption of fixed capital or depreciation. You end up with NDP, net domestic product. If from the NDP, you subtract the statistical discrepancy and add the net foreign factor income, you end up with national income. Now from the national income, that's all the money floating around in the economy. If you subtract taxes, taxes, social security, Retained earnings or the profits that they don't distribute. Add back in some transfer payments, you end up with personal income. And if you subtract personal taxes from personal income, you end up with disposable income. Okay? Just some other measures to kind of get used to things. Take a minute, read through GDP in the text. Get comfortable with the methods and equations because, as I said earlier, GDP is a very important measure overall for macroeconomics. I hope that lesson was helpful and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.